Welcome to lab one on thin prisms. This is a view of the prism that you will be using. It's about one inch by one inch with maybe a quarter inch thickness on the base. You'll find this at your lab station along with a light source and a ray table and some measuring devices. This will be the setup you'd like to use for part one with the Pasco ray source on the left, this black box with three lines coming out of it on the table and the rotating ray optic table on the right you can leave the prism off at first. You just want to make sure that this table is lined up so the rays are entering and exiting along the line marked normal. If you place the prism on the table, you'll notice that the rays now deviate, and this table will allow us in part two to measure that angle more accurately. At this point, you just want to make an observation of which way those rays bend toward the base or toward the apex. You can also view the light source through the prism, and you'll notice that the light source appears to shift relative to its actual location when looking back through the prism. You'll want to draw a figure that explains how the ray bending relates to this apparent shift in the light source. For part two, you'll make a more accurate measurement of the angle deviation. As long as you've lined this ray table up carefully, this should be something you can read off using the scale on the ray optics table. For part three, we'll use a longer distance to make a more accurate measurement of the deviation angle. So in this case, X on the figure would be 30 centimeters, and you've placed a screen at that distance. And we add the prism, we can make a measurement of the displacement Y on that screen using the plastic ruler shown here. In this case, X would be 30 centimeters and Y would be about four centimeters. Make this measurement carefully in order to get accurate measurement results. For part four, you can trace on the piece of paper or a piece of paper in your lab notebook, the edges of the prism that are not parallel, and then extend those lines far enough that you can measure their angle with a protractor. When you're using the protractor, make sure to place the origin of the protractor at the point where those two lines intersect. That'll give you the most accurate angle measurement. The origin of the protractor can be seen where there's a dot or hole in the protractor at the point where the line from 90 degrees meets the line from 0 degrees. In between what has been shown here, you will be asked to do various calculations and explanations of what you observe, so it's helpful to read through the handout ahead of time and come prepared for the lab. We'll certainly be there in person to answer questions that you have, and if you do have questions outside of lab, feel free to get in touch with us.